Not only can you write your own JavaScript code within your Node.js code steps, but you can also import NPM packages from the wider JavaScript ecosystem. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to import a third-party package that's distributed on NPM in order to format a date. I'm going to start with a brand new workflow, and instead of using an HTTP webhook like in our past lessons, I'm actually going to use a schedule-based trigger. This trigger is configured to run every day at 11 a.m. New York Eastern Time. And I've already generated a sample event, so that way we can see the data that it produces. So under the steps trigger event body, we can see that there's two main categories here. There's the time zone UTC and time zone configured. I care about the Eastern time where I currently live, and I'm going to use the timestamp value from my time zone. Now, since this is a Node.js lesson, let's create a brand new Node.js code step. So I'm gonna go under the Node app, and I'm going to run custom node code, and I can access that timestamp under this path that I copied from the trigger. So underneath this long object path is the timestamp in a string format. That's important to remember. So let's import our first NPM package into a Node.js step on Pipedream. So I'm gonna use the regular import statement, and I'm gonna bring in the parse ISO function from the date FNS library. Now you may be wondering, okay, so how do I add this to my package.json? Well, the good news is you don't need to worry about that. Pipedream will automatically import this library from the very definition within this step. So now the date FNS parse ISO function is available within our code step and we can go ahead and use it. So like I mentioned, this particular value on line six is a string. Let's convert it to a date using the parse ISO function. So let's turn this into a date. We'll parse this ISO string. And now it's been converted into a date and we can now manipulate it. So my original goal with this lesson is to produce a really people-friendly format of this timestamp that makes it easy to understand when this workflow ran. So underneath the import statement, I'm also going to import the format function, which accepts two arguments. The first argument is the actual date itself. So we'll format and pass the date itself. And the next argument is going to be the format of the string that we would like to turn this date into. So what we can do is look at the documentation and see that there's a special format to generate certain intervals or specific formatting of the date. I've gone ahead and already written one. So I'm going to paste in my special date format, which will make a very user-friendly date. And I'll go ahead and just return this from the function. Make this a step export. We can click test to see how this will work. And would you look at that? In the results panel, under the export section, we can see that our date formatting worked. It returned the, the date timestamp, but in a very people-friendly format where it says Tuesday, May 2nd, and in the afternoon. Now you can also use date FNS to do date math, like subtracting weeks or find the beginning of the day or the end of the day, all kinds of really nifty things. And I mentioned before that you don't need to worry about a package.json or managing a lock file. Now I mentioned you don't need to manage a package.json or any kind of lock file. Pipedream will automatically import this library for you. Pipedream will automatically import the latest version of a particular package you have defined in the code step. So say if date FNS releases a version three, this code step will pick up the latest major version. You may not want that. You can still pin specific versions within your code.js steps, just like you do in the package.json file. So up here within the actual import statement, we can define that we only want version 2.2 exactly, or we can use the built-in NPM syntax to define rules, such as if we only care about the minor and patch versions, we can put a tilde in front of the version number, and it will follow the SIMVR guidelines of only allowing updates to that specific type. This is very useful for making sure that your workflows are stable, but you're still receiving security updates or usability updates to your NPM packages. Last but not least, I wanna make a short note on the difference between CommonJS and ESM. This format we've been playing with, the import format, is ESM. There is an older format 
that's called CommonJS, which you might see in documentation for other packages. It looks something like this. It would be var package name, well, var module actually. Module equals require, and then the name of the package. You can still use this format in code steps. However, you cannot mix both ESM and CommonJS imports. So we recommend using ESM in general. The entire Node ecosystem is moving in that direction. How do we convert this require package name if the documentation says it this way? Well, we can just go like this. Import module and replace the require with from. Don't forget this extra space here. And now we're using the ESM format instead of the common JS format. One last, last notice, NPM packages also contribute to the overall size limit of the workflow. For example, Puppeteer includes the Chromium browser binary, the actual executable for Chrome inside of the NPM package. Unfortunately, at this time, due to size constraints on workflows, we can't support that. That's just one example of an NPM package that is an outlier that we cannot support, but there are always workarounds. So contact us if you need help with any particular NPM package, we're happy to assist. Using NPM packages is a very powerful way to build workflows quickly and basically stand on the shoulders of giants of people that are maintaining these awesome open source packages. In another lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to use the really popular Axios package to make HTTP requests from code steps.